Thank you all for tuning in today. My name's Thibodeau, and I'm from Biloxi, Mississippi. Today, we're going to be covering an area of film that I believe is overlooked, documentaries. There's so many subjects and awesome producers in this field, but today, in this short video, I'll be covering just the highlights and milestones from each decade. Welcome to Documentaries Over the Decades. Let's get started. The first known documentary to really make it to cinema on a large scale was just over 100 years ago in 1912. Captured by the adventurer Martin Johnson himself and his wife Osa, Cannibals of the South Sea's silent film became to be. They are actually the ones that created the stereotypical hype on all African tribes being cannibals. Thanks guys, now we're all still afraid to leave the country a hundred years later. In our next decade, we have Nay Nook of the North in 1922, the silent film by Robert J. Flaherty. Although at this time there still wasn't a category for documentaries, this film still holds true to real life for capturing the struggles of an Inuk family in the Canadian Arctic. Robert got some flack later about having staged some of the scenes, but no category, no standards. Now I know this next one isn't necessarily in the 30s, but it's close enough, plus very important for our list. John Brierson's silent film, Drifters, in 1929, was about one of Britain's fisheries. This film was Grierson's only personal film, but helped kick off the documentary movement, having adopted the montage and critical editing styles. It's wildly thought that he's one that coined the category of documentary films. In the 1940s and 50s, we see a shift. The last documentaries all had something in common. From Africa to Canada to Britain, seems like we really couldn't fill our curiosity on what life others were living. Now starts the documentaries on war. Why We Fight was the beginning of a propaganda series by Frank Capra, wanting to persuade young men why they should want to be a part of the war. Then there was Night and Fog, a French film and graphic for its time. There were real clips of the Holocaust filled with horrific images of the bodies in camps. In the 60s and 70s, we took a break from the stresses of life and wanted to know more about the stars we fan over. In 1967's Don't Look Back by D.A. Panbaker, we stepped into Bob Dylan's concert tour in England. The film was marked for historical importance. Just a few years later, in 1970's Gimme Shelter, David and Albert captured a stabbing on camera at a free Rolling Stones concert. Such a gloomy incident for such a groovy film, but the act is what made this one of their more well-known films. In the next decade, a different kind of subject was made popular. Without any dialogue or narration, Leonis Katsi became very popular displaying time lapses. It was meant as an experimental film and to show relation between people, nature, and our beloved technology. In the 1990s, we are all too familiar with the underdog Muhammad Ali making the comeback and becoming champion. When We Were Kings made history for capturing the memorable fight between George Foreman and Ali, and at the time, no one had their money on Ali. A lot of social as well as political hype went behind this fight. As much as I'd really love to talk about my personal favorite, Man on Wire, I'll put my feelings aside so we can really point out the highest grossing documentary of all time. A Man After My Own Heart, Michael Moore, releases the controversial Fahrenheit 9-11. This doc was made to point out perhaps a wake-up call for its American people that we are being lied to. Moore had always done docs like this one, always stirring the pot with his controversy, such as his other two films that made it in the top grossing of all time as well, Sicko and Bowling for Columbine. These are my top picks for documentaries over the decades. Thanks again for watching.